Welcome to craft school and another class where we're going to talk about crepe paper flowers. So these parrot tulips have been really popular on our site. So we knew that we had to do a video for you to teach you exactly the techniques of how we made this tulip. The parrot tulip is a cultivated bloom and it became popular in the early 1900s. It's bold serrated edges that are ruffled look very similar to a parrot feather. Therefore it's called a parrot tulip. Back when I had my flower shop, I used to love to work with tulips because there's something about that clean simplicity of a tulip bloom. And then when I discovered parrot tulips and started using them in my bouquets, my mind was blown because they are so irregular and playful and fun. And there's just something magnificent about a parrot tulip. So making a parrot tulip out of crepe paper, especially this extra fine crepe paper, is such a natural fit because the way that the crepe paper will ruffle and curl is perfect for this parrot tulip. And look at this glorious bouquet. We've used two different tones of crepe paper and then some different tones for the leaves. And I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks on how to do this. You will need this extra fine crepe paper. I have aubergine, sangria, cypress, and black for the centers. I've also printed out the pattern, which is in two parts, quick dry tacky glue, oil pastels and art sponges, I have green and white floral tape. I also have white fabric covered wire, which is 24 gauge, 20 gauge green wire, and 18 gauge green wire. For my tools, I have a cutting mat, a rotary cutter, scissors, needle nose plier and wire cutter combo, and a metal ruler. Since some of these patterns are fairly complicated, I went ahead and cut them out ahead of time. And the leaf, you'll notice, it actually has three parts and you can just tape it together to get the full length of the leaf. Now, something you want to note, and I say this for every video on crepe paper, is that we have put grain lines on each one of the patterns. And this is important that you follow the grain line. Grain line is the wrinkles in the crepe paper, it's the creping. And in order to make the flower, you know, curl and fold and look exactly the way you want it to, you'll want to follow that because it's set up there for a reason. So the pattern has a small and a large petal. And this is just so you can have different size of tulips. And I think today we'll go ahead and make the larger tulip. And each of them needs six petals. Note that each of the patterns is actually half a petal. So you'll want one for one side and one for the other. So you'll actually cut 12 pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay my pattern with the grain line and then just cut a strip the same width. I'll then place it at the end and I can see if I cut it at an angle, I can flip it over and get another pattern. So I'll know this is two petals cut it across and stack it. There's another two halves, so that's two petals total. Since this crepe paper is so delicate and light, I like to cut more than one layer at a time. So right now I have six layers and I have my pattern sitting on top. The first thing I'm going to do is just cut this line straight across. Now, if you want to, you can actually use your rotary cutter and your metal ruler to get that really clean. Honestly, it doesn't matter by the time we're done. It's going to be a pretty ruffled little petal, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to cut that across and save this. This will be my second half of my petals and then six layers at a time. If you're not comfortable with six, you can do less and just cut around the tulip pattern. Now remember, you don't have to be perfect because by the time we're done stretching it and you know ruffling it the way that the final parrot tulip will look, it will be just fine if it's not quite perfect. The most important thing is that your pattern follows the grain line. Okay, then I'm going to take this stack and turn them over. Make sure that everything is jogged at the flat end. And then again, make sure that the grain line follows the grain of the crepe paper. So important. Lay that on top and then cut out the other half. And in two cuts, you have six petals. The next piece I'm going to cut is this square and this is out of black. So this is the inside stamen of the tulip. And again, we're just going to make sure that we 
follow the grain line with the lines of the cuts of the stamen and just simply cut that out in about the same size. We only need one of these per tulip. And if you're making a whole bouquet, you can cut a stack of these all at one time and get them done really quickly. So for the green leaves, I'm gonna show you a different technique of cutting. These are so long and a little bit hard to handle and manage. So I'm going to pull out all of my crepe paper. I'm gonna need a big piece. And then place the pattern, again, follow the grain line. And you can see how it's really at a diagonal. So once that's placed, I'll rotate my paper to make this vertical. And then use my metal edged ruler I'm gonna move that just so I don't cut it. And then use our rotary blade to cut long strips. And it looks like I need a longer mat, but for this purpose, I'll just move it down and slide the ruler up. Once you have the first piece cut, it's pretty easy to just kind of follow that and move it all the way down the paper. So it looks like we need, oh, I would say at least one and a half inches. You can mark that or you can eyeball it either way. And then just start cutting strips. And for each leaf, you're going to need two strips. So I've cut two strips and I've used the pattern to cut out the shape and you'll see both pieces have the line going along the grain just like the pattern. So to make the leaf, all we'll have to do is take one of those pieces and flip it over and then you have that beautiful V and I'll show you how to glue this together a little bit later. I have my stack of 12 half petals here and this time we're gonna use tacky glue. So this is new for us, we usually use hot glue. The reason why I'm using tacky glue rather than hot glue for this project is because we really want the petals to lie flat and using that bead of hot glue gives a little bit of a bump. So let me show you how I make this work. Also the tacky glue takes a bit longer to dry and I'll just put a really fine bead right on the edge. Sometimes it works really well to move the petal and just hold the glue. And I'll take the wire and place it right onto the glue. And then pick up another petal, flip it over. And put one right on top of the other. Another nice thing about this tacky glue is it actually dries clear. So if you see a little bit peeking out, don't worry. That will all dry. You can see on the back, that will be fine. So I have all of my petals drying. They look like fall leaves. And I'm going to show you the same technique that we are using for the long leaf. And you'll notice in my bouquet that I have different widths of leaves. So just note that this pattern is to, to start with. So you can use some of the smaller, narrower leaves, and then you can also do some fairly wide ones. You'll wanna have a variety in your bouquet I love the fact that I can go all the way down the leaf and it will still not be dry by the time I get to the top, which is a benefit and not using the hot glue. Now my wire is not quite long enough for this leaf, but I want a little bit closer to the tip because I'm gonna use it to curl. So I'll go ahead and place it maybe an inch from the tip and then very carefully drop that right on top of the glue. You might have to bend your wire just a little bit or actually move your crepe paper to match your wire and then lay the other piece right on top and you might have maybe I don't know a quarter inch to a half an inch overlay and that's all good you'll just want to make sure there's enough glue so that it actually stays in place and once I have that all put together, I'll set this aside and let it dry. 
So to make the center of the tulip, I'm going to use this really fine 24 gauge white wire. I have an 18 gauge wire for the stem. Here's the cut black piece of crepe paper, a yellow oil pastel, and then my white floral tape. And I'm gonna take these little, very, very thin white wires and cut them down to five inches, and I'll need three. I'll fold those in half. And then use some of this white floral tape just to give the a finish on the tip of each of these little pieces of pistol. So I finished wrapping all three of those and now I'm going to bundle them up. And wrap them together. Now I'm going to bend them out in almost a triangle shape, maybe a little bit of a tip on the end like this. And using this yellow pastel, just paint the ends. And that looks like pollen. Then I'm going to take this piece and each of these strips, I'm just going to roll in between my fingers. And this will create the stamen. And then I'll bend down each end, I would say about a quarter of an inch at the tip. Wrap this around the pistol. You can kind of arrange it so it looks as natural as possible. Then I'm going to add my 18 gauge wire and with my green floral tape, I'll very, very tightly wrap that up. So before we can add the petals, let's add some pastel to the petals and then add that little parrot tulip ruffling. Now you want to work on a surface that you can clean really easily. So if you don't have a mat that's washable, you know, maybe think of a big white piece of paper or craft paper. And I have picked out a few pastels here that have some similar colors, maybe a little bit brighter. And I'm just going to simply and easily add a little bit towards the center. Now this is just a way to you know, create some variation in the color because, you know, um, tulips aren't all one color. They have a lot of variation and, and variety in colors, and this just really helps add life to it. If you want to, you can use these little sponges to really work that into the grain. I like to paint in the direction of the grain itself. It seems like it looks a little more natural, and you can also get it into the creases. So I'm finishing up by using the pastel on the second side so that we have a little color on all areas of these tulip petals. And now they're ready to stretch. You can see my mat's a little bit dirty. I'm gonna put that over here so I can wash it up later. So all I'm gonna do is take the edges of these tulips and just stretch them about as far as they'll go. Now, my crepe paper stretch is 120%, so that's gonna be a nice, beautiful ruffle. I tore it a little bit, that's okay. Just gonna go in and clip that out. And then just keep stretching. So since this is all cut on an angle and we have a lot of grooves and bumps with these parrot tulip petals, it's really easy to tear. So just stretch really gently and know if you do tear it, it's okay. You can just kind of cut that piece out. It doesn't make it look less beautiful because I think you want that variety anyway. 
So that works out. So I have all six petals stretched and ready. And now you can find out why we went ahead and put the wire in the center. One of the beautiful things about adding that wire is you can really control the shape of your petals. And I'm gonna create this sort of S shape. So it'll create a curve at the base and then it'll tip out at the ends. And notice that you'll get a little bit of pastel on your fingers. So you might wanna keep a wet paper towel beside your workplace so that you can clean that off really quick. Okay, so I'm gonna take three of these petals. I'm gonna bend this right at the base here and place them around in a triangle. And I'm going to just use my tape, my green tape. We're not hot gluing anything today and attach these three. You can see it like this. Again, the nice thing about the wire is you can move things around. So as long as you have it in a basic formation, you can make adjustments after. You can see the pastel coming off on my green tape. That's okay, I'm gonna go over another time. So there's the three, and then I'll add the final three. And place those right in between the first three. And again, tape them on. Tulips tend to have longer stems, and since these are such large tulips. I'm actually going to go ahead and use the whole stem. My arrangement really wants it to be tall. So I'll go ahead and run my floral tape all the way down. If you want a thicker stem, you can always add an extra wire. You can even do that after the fact. You can kind of slide it into the head and then just retape it. And like I was saying, you can go in and move your tulip petals around. You can add a little more ruffle, stretch it if you need to, add some bend. But this is just beautiful, look at this. I love having a little variety too. So for your leaf, since the wire did not go all the way down, I have a little trick I'm gonna show you. I've cut another wire and I'm gonna place that right on top. Now, when I'm doing an arrangement, this bottom leaf will be tucked inside so nothing's going to really be showing at this point. I'm overlapping about two inches and then I will just gather and then bring in my floral tape and just tightly wrap that around. This makes a really nice solid base. And it kind of keeps the thickness of a leaf. You can always go over and Tape it another time if that seems a little bit loose. Looks like I need to do that. So depending on how your paper folds and bulks up, just add another layer. And then this is gonna be really helpful when I'm doing arrangements to have a pointy tip here because that way it won't bulk up and you know cause some problems at the base of my arrangement. So the leaf itself, it looks like our tip got a little bit you know, spewed there. Easy enough. You just take your scissors and trim it down. And the thing that I love about these leaves is you can give them a little bit of a stretch. You can also bend them any way you want. So when you're making an arrangement, you can, you know, arrange it to fill the spaces or this one, see how I've curled this one. Or I have a big one back here to give it sort of you know, a crown behind the tulips. So again, these are really great for making arrangements. Or you can also just tape them right onto your tulips and make that just a one tulip in a vase. That would also be really pretty. So a few new things we learned today, how to use pastels to add a little bit of color. There's several different materials that we use and this is one of them. We also talked about using wire inside of your petals to give a little bit more shape. And then we also used a tacky glue rather than a hot glue, and this is all new for these videos. So we'll be doing that again in some other videos. And as you can see, this makes an absolutely stunning bouquet, and it's really easy. 
When you finish your tulips or any other crepe paper flower that you've made, make sure and share them with us on our social media because we love to see what you guys make. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it and then subscribe to our channel so that you can get more videos like this.